Hi, Mark Lee here, FX Trademark at markets.com. Welcome to today's session. Today's session is certainly different from the usual or the norm, let's call it, that I do on X ray, which is the, for those of you that have been working together with me, the FX Open when the US session gets underway, the FX Recap every day, educational sessions, crypto trading, FX pop ups when there's a nice setup. Always looking for setups, potential trades, whether it's on an intraday or maybe on a daily chart. Today, taking a step back and doing a bit of a review and a prediction, let's call it looking forward. We did do the same thing last year, but then if you recall, and going to be doing the same thing. Now we got two weeks to go until the end of the year, and then we're into a whole new year, 2020. Two. First thing I think, or the first point that I really want to make clear here is, yes, of course, I have an opinion. And yes, I prefer the word opinion probably to, to, to predictions, but I have my opinion, my gut feel as to which way I see the markets going, whether it's based on some fundamentals, some geopolitical news and events, as a technical trader, looking at charts and making my assessment or taking, uh, making my opinion from that. However, I will not click and take a trade based on my opinion. Never. I will only take trades when I have technical confirmation. So if the trade happens to be what I think is going to happen, that's fine, that feels good. If the trade, the potential trade, the setup I see is not what I thought. It makes no difference to me. I'm a technical trader. There's no emotion involved. There's no pride, uh, whatever word you want to use, proving that I'm right. Not at all. The market is right. The price is right. I'm a technical trader. The only thing that counts to me are, is the price, because that's what it's all about. And then using different technical indicators, to predict potential or future moves based on my understanding and my knowledge of technical analysis. Having said that, let me throw this out there. I do feel that the US dollar has had its run. I think the strong US dollar we've seen this year, and here is the dollar index, zoom out a little bit. I've got two levels in here. I've got the low of the year. And let's round the numbers off. We are looking at the big picture here from 89 all the way up to 97. And now we're sitting around that 95, 97. We're sitting around that 96 mark. Strong US dollar, we can see that. I, I feel based on strong US dollar, I think, was based a little bit on uh, Trump being voted out and the uncertainty that went along with Donald Trump. New government came into power, the uh, Democratic Party and Biden. I think that certainly added some certainty to the US dollar. The uncertainty of COVID, I think people still look for a safe haven, didn't, weren't looking for risk, and when risk is off, US dollar does perform. Was there any other currency that I think had a, a, a reason to outperform the US? Not at all. We can see the US pretty much beat up on all its, all the other majors. But the big reason, the big reason for this US dollar strength came from the central banks and their policies and their announcements about, and the Fed certainly leading the way in that regard, the Fed coming out and talking up the dollar, the US dollar uh, interest rates to be raised next year from these all time lows that, we, that we've seen and almost gotten used to, and that in itself has been enough, I believe, to 
bring out the buyers and the dollar hawks, the dollar bulls, wanting to buy the dollar. Europe had its fundamental and political issues. UK, Brexit, <laughs> far from over in a done deal. And also, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but or a saying of buy the rumor, sell the fact. And I think that's where we had it. Buying the rumor in terms of the US dollar, talking about raising rates and talking about the strong US dollar was enough to see it move like we have and to see it take out these previous swing highs at 93.50 and then at 94.80 and trying to make its way back to the 100, never quite made it to the, uh, the 100 level which is the base mark when we talk the US dollar index. But now that it has peaked out to what looks at this point at the end of December, going into the end of December 2021, that 97 could be the high that could stay. Maybe another test in the next two weeks. Markets will be a little bit thinner. We could see some volatility, maybe spike up to these levels again, but could well be the high for quite some time. I'll be looking for opportunities to sell the dollar. And the dollar was so strong this year, it was strong against all the majors. Strong US dollar, let's just look at gold. Strong US dollar equals weak gold, the, the inverse relationship that we've become familiar with. And if I zoom out on the daily, you can see that gold after trying to get to that 2000 mark, didn't get higher than 1920, has come all the way down to the 1680 level. It's tried it once, twice, got closer again in, in August, and now looking pretty comfortable around that 1783. Perhaps if gold, if, uh, sorry, if the US dollar is to weaken, if we see that technically, wouldn't be surprised to see gold have another run up. From a technical point of view, since October, we've got higher lows ever so slightly. We do have higher highs, and this could well be a base around the 70, 80, 70, 60 level where we could see gold have another go at higher levels. Looking at that 1800, because 1800 I think is pivotal, and if it can trade comfortably above that 1800, perhaps even further. Let's have a look at the majors. Starting with our two European currencies, the euro and the pound. And when I was talking of interest rates, the Fed by far the most hawkish, talking about uh, raising rates early in next year and throughout throughout the year. The exact opposite is the European Central Bank. Not, not talking about raising interest rates. And it's not really surprising that the biggest mover of all, the US dollar, the, the biggest move it made was against the euro. From sitting at uh, Let's see if I've got my high in here. I don't have it in. Let's put it in to around that 123 mark. There we are. So from close to 123 down to 112. And it's sitting at those low numbers right now. Been down over a thousand pips. The one talking about raising interest rates, the other saying not to raise interest rates. And we'll look at these technical levels. Could the euro get a bounce from here? Sure. Again, we'll wait, go to shorter time frames, look for confirmation. But the euro's got a long way to go from sitting right now, well, today 113, 112, and around this level, certainly a long way to go on the upside. The pound, which in 2020 went from $1.14 to $1.36 has also come crashing down. There's the high of this year, 142. Now fighting 
back from the low which we saw this past week at 131.65. Should there be a bounce here? Again, a long way to go, lots of room for the pound to bounce back. The two commodity currencies, the Canadian and the Australian. Let's just zoom out a little bit here. There's our highs for the year, 129.50, all the way down to 120. Yes, it's fought its way back, but certainly getting stuck at around this 127, 128 level. If the US dollar is to weaken, and we do see the commodity currencies, particularly the Canadian fight back, long way to go from around 127, 128, to come back to this 120 level. We won't even talk, talk stronger than that. Remember what goes hand in hand with strong Canadian dollar is oil. Should we see oil rally the way we did see oil rally earlier this year? Certainly that's when the Canadian dollar had the strong run as well. The Australian. Last year, about 800 pips from 69 cents to 77 cents. And this year from 80 to 70. Oh, sorry about that. That off, it, it's love. <laughs> so here's the Australian, there's our high sitting at 80 cents. There's the low at 70. There's a lovely from a technical, as a technical trader, there's the double bottom. Looks like it could fight back off there. And again, a long way to go if we do see the Australian, the commodity currencies strengthen. And part of that, I believe, will, um, will be the easing of, of, of supply chains. And once that becomes less of a problem and we see some kind of resolution, that could push global inflation lower and kind of improve the mood as well. And that would be good for the commodity currencies. Let's have a look at the yen, our other major. And the yen last year, I've got the numbers here, 102 to 115. That seems to be the range that we worked with. All the way down there, the beginning of this year, there's the 102, went all the way up there to 115, the end of last month in November. Now sitting around that 113, 114 number, but again, a long way to, to come down. Bear in mind that we often see strong year, weak year, strong year, weak year. So 2020 definitely was a weak year for the US dollar. The index came down, all the majors strengthened considerably against the US. Last year, or this year, should I say, sorry, 2021, we're definitely seeing the US dollar fight back. Next year, let's look for opportunities to sell against the majors on the index itself, maybe to buy gold. And if that's not the case and the US dollar does continue to strengthen like we saw this year, that's also fine. We'll get technical confirmation. We'll look to break above resistance and support levels um, from this year because we're pretty close to those levels on a lot of the majors and follow our technical indicators. Remember, it's not subjective, it's objective. Let's follow the facts. Let's not go with our gut feel. We'll do what the charts tell us as technical traders. It's what's got us and put us in good stead up until now. No reason to change. Most importantly, thank you for a good year. Nice working together. I wish all of you a happy new year, happy and healthy new year, and look forward to working together in 20. Good training, everybody.